I gotta take a little time, a little time to think it over. Gotta read between the lines. Feels like the world is on my shoulders. Cause in this life, there is heartache and pain. And I don't know if I can take it again. Live this lonely life. All I know what love is Want you to show me All I feel what love is I know you can show me Show me Hey, what's going on is the hardest part of the ring The seventh edition uh, edition, not audition. I'm not trying out for my own podcast. Clearly, I failed. It is the NXT November 4th, 2020 episode. We are talking about the Hulu edition of this program. My name is Bob, spelled the same backwards as forwards for all you palindrome fans out there. We are talking about the wrestling program, the developmental system that isn't a developmental system, the brand that is an equal brand but isn't an equal brand, where everyone fights for brand supremacy at Survivor Series except for NXT. They just kind of gave up on that. and uh, We're going to have a great time. <laughs> I'm going to try to do this all in one take because I'm going to get Taco Bell later. I'm going to get the nacho cheese chicken chalupa combo and a cheesy uh, gordita crunch. And the combo comes with a small soft taco as well. It's way too much food. But I got a $100 gift certificate for Taco Bell to my good friends in New York before I left the city. For obvious reasons, uh, we opened the show with Hulk Hogan slamming Andre the Giant. What? In NXT? That's right. Then, now, forever. They have the little logo, the signature thingy, and it always opens with Hogan slamming Andre. And I think there's Brett and Taker and Warrior and Air or something like that going on. And probably Trish Stratus, the Vince Loves Blondes. And uh, so that's it. And I think Hogan won the match. Uh, go back and look it up. <laughs> oh, good heavens. Her heavens to Murgatroyd. Every which way from Sunday. Heavens to Betsy. Bless her heart. Kiss my grits. Ember Moon enters, and she is gimmicked out to the max. Her and Shotzi Blackheart should just have a tag team called the Gimmicks. And between the two of them, there's 94 different gimmicks. She's got a helmet she wears for one second, and then face paint, and then a mohawk, and it's, it's red. And um, then there's a package during her entrance. I don't understand why there's a video package during the entrance. That's is that worse than just being in the ring and starting the match? You know, at least being in the ring, like, okay, well, we're ready to ring the bell and have this athletic contest. When you throw the package on during somebody's entrance, it's a here they are, and eh, never mind. We don't need to see the rest of their hello. We don't have time to wait them walk another 12 feet. Never mind, we can't look at them for another second because they got too many gimmicks. <laughs> Dakota Kai enters the ring next with Raquel Gonzalez, who is tall, and they have their match, and it's good wrestling. It's back and forth. There's some headlocks. There's some head scissors to get out of the headlocks after the headlock takedowns. I like that the um, the, the heel, Dakota, pulls the hair first, and Ember does it right after. There's like a hair backwards takedown. and So this is cool because this is like classic baby. Or the way you, you build a badass baby face is... They actually still follow the rules, but they the second they are wronged, they will throw that wrong right back in the heel's face. Uh, unfortunately, it has to be uh, Amber Moon. So um, then Amber Moon tries to cheat by or do something dirty by putting Dakota's head in between the post and the turnbuckle strut thing. And Dakota actually outsmarts her, and that's how they, they start to heat, which I didn't understand that. Then Amber misses a crazy dive, and we go to break. Oh... Uh, yeah, I'm down on Ember. I, Ember is not doing it for me. D Dakota, it's been about a year now. I think it was the War Games last year that they turned her. She's coming into her own. It works for her. She has this, this, this bratty, this entitlement thing that that um, you know, I think I think at least draws me, and I think it draws people in. 
Ember, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm just not buying it. She Because she teases Dakota. Like, so Ember's making a little comeback here, and she's teasing Dakota. And she's like, do you, I'll give you one for free, like sticking her chin out. Like, you can hit me, you can slap me, whatever it is. You want one for free, I'll give you a shot. And then, of course, Dakota swings, and Ember puts her in a submission of some sort. But why? Does anyone know? What, because Ember doesn't know what Ember's character is. That's the thing. She's just mad that she, she didn't get... Her character is she didn't get pushed, uh, which is not good. And, oh, we're going to talk about that later. Uh, I used to like NXT so much. It's a shame I haven't been doing this for five years. I would have had all these positive things to say. Now I'm a Debbie Downer. I'm a negative Nancy. I'm a peeping Tom. Wait, what? Okay. <laughs> oh, what happens next? There's a distraction of some sort with uh, Raquel Gonzalez. And Dakota does a wacky kick thing. Where Ember's, Ember's kind of leaning off the buckle there. And Dakota wins this 1-2-3. Thank God that is the only finish. The way this match was worked, that was the only that was the only finish that was worth anything. We have to build somebody up. I, I, I fully believe, if not for the big EO Rhea match that they've been dangling and blatantly, purposely trying to avoid for so long then Dakota would have actually been NXT champion already, and probably Candace too. But because they're keeping an eye on Io and Rhea, which ultimately is a babyface match, it kind of doesn't do too much for the division. So you might as well, let's build up some heels. And I think they did good with Candace later on too. I am going to make fun of that, but still. So Dakota and Candace, I think, should just be elevated as much as possible just to give... I'm assuming Rhea will be the Io, and Io will go to Raw and be... Asuka's friend, and no one will know that's not Kyrie Zane. Well, Vince McMahon won't know that's not Kyrie Zane, and that's what they're going to do. But, um, I'm so I'm glad Dakota got to Duke here, and hopefully they're just moving on with this. Um, my friend Stale Seltzer of the Wrestling Rubbernecker uh, gave it 14 stars. They gave it 15 because he hates women. Shotzi Blackheart is on TV, ugh. Um, her hair is green. And then the so just the shots here, the, the Gremlins too, female Gremlin, is talking about Tony Storm. So they're going to have some kind of baby face match. And then for no reason, Shotzi yelled, welcome to the ball pit. Uh, she's going to fight Tony Storm at McDonald's? Uh, what, is, what is the ball pit? I never heard of that. But her hair is green. So there's that. And then Tony Storm talked quite believably about, hey, she's back. She was hurt for a bit. Now she's in NXT. She's not in the UK anymore. She's blonde and Australian and likes 80s rock and roll hairband music. And she's going to win the contest by pinfall or submission, according to the rules stated of sports entertainment athletic competitions. Drake Maverick and Killian Dane are dancing, or Drake is dancing. I've well, yeah, this is such a raw gimmick, and it's on NXT, and it, so much raw is leaking onto NXT. It, it's just, ah, uh, this show has raw juice all over it. Ugh, raw juice, gross. So they come out to this stupid music with a whistle in it, and Wade Barrett acknowledged it sucks. And they fight the same team as uh, a week or two ago called Ever Rise. That's when I was mad that Drake Maverick and Ever Rise had the same kind of gear on, but now they have different colored gear. And one of the Ever Rise guy, Ever Rise guys, he's a wise guy. One of the guys, he goes out through the middle rope like uh, wrong. Basically, he uh, he goes out left-handed, so he's reaching for the apron, which is the hardest part of the ring. Uh, he reaches for the apron, hardest part of the ring, with his left hand and grabs the right with his middle. It's supposed to be the opposite. You would grab the middle rope supine position with your left hand and then reach for the hardest part of the ring with your right hand and go out that way. Unless you were trained in Europe, but I don't think he was. So if you weren't trained in Europe or Japan or, or lucha style, whatever, then you are wrong. Okie dokie. Now we have, uh, that match didn't end, so I'm not going to give it any stars. I put an asterisk on this note that uh, that counts as a star. And my asterisk star says, stupid, dumbass, limo interruption. Okay. So we go through this train of bad NWO ripoffs because Pat McAfee is a uh, worthless mark who should never be on TV uh, in, a, in wrestling anyway and have any kind of microphone in wrestling, yet he does. Uh, Pat's group comes out and buries everyone. They beat up the Ever Eyes, they beat up Killian Dane and, and, and Drake Maverick, especially Dane who's a monster, I don't understand that. And they bury everyone in the ring and they make, especially the baby faces, look worthless because everybody's been beat up. 
So Pat cuts this long, long promo, and it's so NWO'd up to the gills. McAfee takes the, the video camera, and he holds it, and he's wearing shorts because who cares, L looking like a bum, because it's just too cooler than cool. It's so I'm trying so hard to be a cool heel. There's like 90 things wrong with it. Uh, he Pat even draws attention to the fact that he says Pete Dunn got ripped, or he look at Pete Dunn, he's ripped, he got in shape. Motherfucker, don't tell people he wasn't in shape beforehand. He was wrestling 45 minute matches anyway, so yeah, he looks better now than he did a year ago, but he didn't look bad a year ago. Um, he interrupts his own guys. He said that his guys weren't pushed, which again, that's what I was talking about. Every cool heel. NWO type thing. He, he's doing a little breaky kayfabe things. Uh, he dresses like a bum, messes with the camera, buries faces and heels. Uh, and of course, the promos are long and acting like they're taking over. And it's, uh, it's just, it's just crap. Uh, Pete Dunne's reason is for turning his week. Roderick Strong turned on him three years ago, so three years later he gets even by beating up Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah, that didn't make any sense. I'm not happy with Pete as a heel. I don't like it. The, um, the only maybe tiny saving grace is they already started planting seeds for Pete Dunne being not just the quietest, but, but the one they can't control, the one that McAfee can't control. And I'm hoping this is leading someday to just Pete Dunne legitimately beating the shit out of Pat McAfee. Uh, they do this banner tease where it makes no sense. They're going to fly the, the banner of ye, the Undisputed Era in the ceiling, but there's one problem. The Undisputed Era has never shown us a banner of their logo that they care about before, so why am I supposed to care about it? As far as I know, it was, it was invented mid-sentence, so they, they're going to throw it in a thrash can, trash can and light on fire. More NWO crap. Oh, I mentioned the stupid shorts. And then we hear, uh, we're the greatest, you suck, cheers. That's the catchphrase that he ends the in-ring promo with, that we're getting there. And then they get outside, and we have to follow them outside through the crowd. But there's as many people in the crowd as there is cutting a promo, so it's just through the gathering. And they make their way through the gathering to a parking lot. Bury the monster killing and Dane again, because why not? They do a car door on the head thing, and that's when you see Pat can't quite control Pete Dunne, and that's fine. But we got to bury this big monster really three times on the show. So good luck with us ever taking him seriously again. Because your big guy's left. Keith's gone and your Dijakova guy's gone. And Priest is tall. But he's not like a big thick guy. So what is what is your plan? I don't know what your plan is. Uh, I really don't get it. Maybe Ciampa will get his hands on them at some point. I really don't know. But they'll bury him too. So what the hell. Uh, carry and cross. I don't know when he comes back. Uh, okay. So Killian is bleeding from the mouth, and I think they should have black and white picture of that on the internet. Reminder: This is the Hulu version of WWE NXT. So if I'm missing something, that's because Hulu only shows an hour of the 90 minutes that uh that airs. They show you the most important chunks. And Pat McAfee looks at the right at the camera. And rolls down a window, and he repeats the horrific catchphrase, We're the greatest, you suck, cheers. Again, it sucked, and he repeated it twice. So they bury Killian Dane twice, they repeat a stupid catchphrase twice. And then Johnny Gargano, now he likes wheels, and he has a maroon title, North American belt. And he's hanging out with the Scream guy that we can't call the Scream guy. And Gargano wins at the Game of Life the old popular board game that may or may not be from Milton Bradley, I don't recall. And then we take another break, and then we go to Tony Storm and, and Shotzi, and Shotzi comes to the ring very upset that there's no tank, and then she slips on a rope, and uh, why is this match even, first of all? So Shotzi has, does not have the experience of Tony Storm. She hasn't had the level of matches on TV that Tony Storm has had. She hasn't held the championships and won, for the UK and won the tournament that Tony Storm did, I think, two years ago. At the end of the uh, the, uh, the one that led to the Evolution pay-per-view. I want to say where she beat Io Shirai. Is that right? I hope that's right. I don't get why Shotzi's even competitive in this match. This match should have been over in six minutes. Well... Uh, they start. Here's the thing: we have two baby faces. I don't know which one I'm supposed to want to win. I know personally I want Tony Storm to win, but what I don't get is 
the issue between them, the only issue between them, other than it wanting to win the match, is one second before the bell rings, we hear Shotzi yell about a tank, and then an announcer yells about a tank, and then I guess uh, this whole thing tanked. It didn't really do Storm any favors because the match is about Shotzi's tank. It's not even about Shotzi. It's about Shotzi's tank. They are big on her. Jesus Christ. Um, so Candice LeRae appears on a screen talking about the tank, and we know something's up. Something bad is about to happen to it. Clearly she has it, which allows Tony Storm to do kind of a like a roll-up, like an O'Connor roll on a bridge kind of thing. One, two, three. Very good. Storm wins. She she had to beat a distracted Shotzi, uh, distracted Shotzi, just like Keith Lee needed to beat a distracted Elias like a week and a half ago. It's I give the match 500 stars. So Candice LeRae, naturally on screen, she has the scream person with her again from the popular horror film of 1999. It's the last time, uh, not since the Attitude Era, has Vince McMahon decided to pay attention to anything in pop culture, and nor have a lot of the wrestlers in charge. So that's where we go. We're stuck with screen. That's why we did Blair Witch on Halloween Havoc like a week ago. And Saw, which is 04. All right, fair enough. So what happens here? Oh, uh, yeah, Candice LeRae. So she... She takes her Hummer or whatever the hell, her big truck-like vehicle, and she runs over the tank. But that really just ends up pushing it for a while because she doesn't run over it with either of the wheels initially. She just kind of basically probably ruins the undercarriage of her, of her own vehicle worse than anything else. But so for a very long time, she pushes this this tank on a pavement. And then eventually just the, the turret splits from the body of it. And I guess it's ruined forever now. I mean, how the hell can we ever make another, like, Tonka Toys, whatever the hell, battery-operated tank? I guess it's just unrepairable. We're never gonna... And Tony Storm comforts Shotzi after beating her over the loss of her giant tank, of her little tank, of her giant toy tank, but her little tank tank. Ugh. Tanks for nothing. Why would Tony Storm care? Except this is weird. I think uh, more than anything, I hope that her character was just like, I'm weirded out. I guess I should try to be nice. We see a video package of Rhea Ripley and Io Shirai. Uh, I didn't catch in that package when they're actually going to wrestle each other. So I don't know what I'm missing here. Maybe I wasn't. I was distracted because there's a big election and everything else. Ten seconds went by. I didn't see if the numbers had changed. We come back to Velveteen Dream, who is writhing around the ring in jeans, dressed like the NWO. Hey, Jesus, we can't get away from that. And then Tommaso Ciampa comes. He's got a new war mask thingy. And I think I could have heard, maybe I'm crazy or maybe it's been a while, but I thought I heard a twist on his music. There was like a little something extra in it. And you know the rule. If you have new music, any shape or form, you're winning that match. So, uh... Tommaso Ciampa beating the crap out of Velveteen Dream is the only believable thing and remotely enjoyable or satisfying thing I've seen on this program so far in a WWE Hulu version of NXT with limited commercial interruptions. Probably seven, nine in a month with some of your original programming and your favorite TVs and movies. Hulu, it's TV in the palm of your hand. Oh, uh, VD, I guess I write down. Uh, Velveteen Dream put his legs up early twice on this barricade spot. So... When you go to suplex a guy, uh, correction, when you're being suplexed, you don't throw your left arm, your left arm, I want to emphasize, you don't throw your left arm over the guy's neck, let him do that for you, because it looks like you know you're about to be suplexed. You don't throw your left arm over his head if he's body slamming you for the same reason. If someone's giving you an Irish whip, you don't stick your left arm up so the guy can grab it and shoot you off, because that looks like you know you're about to be Irish whipped. You just have to, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a young wrestler's habit. It's a wrestling school habit. It just has to be broken. It's like be, being Irish whipped from the buckle, but you're Irish whipping someone out of the buckle, but you don't hop out to the middle. You just stand there and then they run 18 feet from buckle to buckle, you know, or, you know, 20 by 20, whatever the hell, just because you just moved your arm and then it just doesn't look good. Watch, uh... I'm going to be a little biased because I, I, I briefly rode with the guy. Watch watch Head Shrinker Samu do it. Watch any of the Samoans do anything and it's done right, okay? Why, never mind. Forget Head Shrinker Samu, which forget I said that. Watch uh, one of the recent 
Uso and Roman Reigns matches, and I can't even think of the instance, but I'm willing to just bet. Like, go watch one. You'll be like, oh, that's how Irish whips and Irish whip reversals actually are supposed to be done. Um, Because it looks like you're pulling with all of your weight and then pushing off, and it's you have to sell your own Irish whip as you do it. So never mind. Who cares? Uh, so Velveteen Dream, as he's getting suplexed, got first on the barricade. He throws both his legs up twice, and there's kind of a stutter, and it looks really goofy. Velveteen, we go to a break, and then Velveteen Dream is in control somehow. Uh, I don't, I don't get this. I Champa, I love his stuff. I love how he hits. I think he has his best matches. I'm starting to think without Johnny Gargano. He does. Uh, this is weird. He did some Ultimate Warrior style clotheslines, where he just keeps running, and the other guy keeps bumping. Rick Rude probably got exhausted doing that. He did it the best. You can see when Warrior does it with Hogan at Mania 6, Warrior's got to stop and hit the side. And then, you know, because Hogan wasn't moving that fast. And Hogan was still going good, you know, for Warrior. To everyone's surprise, we do this crazy suplex where Velveteen Dream suplexes Tommaso Ciampa so that Ciampa's ass hits the ring apron, which is the hardest part of the ring. And they both tumble over the top rope and over the hardest part of the ring to the floor. And eventually, uh, something happens. A chair flies in the ring somehow and distracts the referee, but not really. And Ciampa catches uh, Velveteen Dreams. He thwarts his evil plan anyway and hits them with a DDT from the ring apron, which is the hardest part of the ring. And uh, what else happens here? Yeah, he hits his finish, the fairy tale ending. I wish they would change the name of that. It doesn't sound very tough, but whatever. Ciampa pins the guy with a minute and a half left of the broadcast, and nothing else weird happens. It's just over. One, two, three, over. I'm Ciampa. I'm coming to kick people's asses. I'm still an ass kicker. I got gray hair in my beard, and uh, I'm going to beat someone up. And with no one in the heavyweight title pitcher, I bet you because of War Games, if they're still doing that, they're just going to... War Games, the only problem with the War Games the last two pay-per-views was that it ties up all their titles. And I think last year there were no title matches or at least no title changes. And it didn't matter because it was such a good show. But still, those the, the one problem with some of those gimmick things, like the old Survivor Series too, like every, every Survivor Series before 91, it ties up all your belts and there's nothing to defend. So ultimately, you're going to have the same champions at the end of the night, guaranteed. And that's not good. So I'm wondering if they're just going to hold off and... I'm guessing Undisputed versus the McAfee group, because that's four and four, and that math works really well. And then I don't know what Finn's status is, but they, they put pieces of Finn Balor's jaw in and out and left and right, north and south and east and west, and squeezing a lemon, stopping on a dime. Don't know where we're going, but we are making good time. Excuse me, a burp from some ginger ale. Ah, NXT is... Lost it for me. I haven't seen the uh, the NXT UK yet. I'm looking forward to it. I'm curious what the follow-up will be to the Ilya and Walter match. Well, if they're setting up a new feud or setting up a rematch. I'm not really sure. Um, it's hard to tell. They take their sweet time. So sometimes it takes a while to see, okay, where are we going next? I think the Gallus group returns. And so it's going to be some tag matches. I won't lie to you. A few of those UK matches, I will go to the end. But um, but they'll, they'll, they hook me. And when they But when they hook you, they hook you. Like, it's, uh, so who knows? And I think uh, Kaylee Ray, uh, the women's UK champion, who is one of the best on that show, is on this week's too. Haven't seen it yet. So I'm looking forward to that. Something happened with UK. I don't understand. I don't know what the, uh, with NXT. Excuse me. Yeah, it's getting weird. It's uh, I don't know if it's the Hulu version. They're just there's. I feel like I've been staring at saw at Shotzi and Ember Mood for like six weeks. Um, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. I don't understand. I feel like the women's title is tied up, even though EO has it. They've been putting off this EO Rhea match for so long that I just that title's tied up. And we know the, the heavyweight title has been vacated for a while, and it was vacated a little bit before it was vacated. So everything's kind of up in the air, and only champions are two guys who are brand new heels, and they're part of a group where they're overshadowed by a guy who has no business in wrestling, and it's nothing but a complete self-serving mark. And I promise you, he will sell nothing and get no comeuppance because they, they love him. So sorry to be a, a Debbie Downer, but I want my Taco Bell combo. So I will talk to you, you folks about Monday Night Raw probably next Tuesday, next Wednesday sometime. Once the Hulu edition airs and I can record some nonsense, we can shoot shoot the shit, chew the fat, whistle Dixie, wax philosophical, rub elbows, grease palms, schmoozing, networking, mover shakers, trendsetters, go-getters, gypsies, tramps, and thieves. It's absolutely bananas. Thank you for listening to Bar is part of the rent.